Well, the breakaway has now split here. Van der Bol has fallen away from the other two, and it is now Niemitz and Meyer who are pushing on. 7.4 kilometers from the finishing line, 2 minutes 42. Remember, at one time they had 11 minutes, so there is just a chance. But they're counter-attacking now at the head of the main field, and it's Team Katusha now who are trying to destroy Alberto Contador and Alejandro Valverde. And you know, they have a chance of moving ahead in the team race tonight as well. Katusha looking very strong on this stage, aren't they, really, with the, the numbers there? And it's not just the numbers of riders that are, it's the quality of climbers as well in their team. Well, to put two Katusha riders away and still leave their intended leader, Joaquim Rodriguez, and there he is, 1-3-1. One, one. He's in second place, watching his two teammates put in a move. That's a very, very clever attack. Rodriguez has said all along he's feeling good. And if he sees his chance, he'll try and win here to prove a point. Um, as a Spanish rider, of course, to win at the Lagos de Covadonga is very special. Navarro yo-yoing a little bit at the back now. Yeah, and Sanandas as well from Tinkoff. Saxo has been doing quite a bit of work at the front of that group. He's now paying for his efforts. And he just leaves uh, Zog up there with uh, Contador again. Zog up there, obviously, yesterday, nearly winning the stage. He's still got enough legs to stay with Contador. Well, as we continue the ascension here, the two leaders are holding on, but the gap continues to come down. This is Moreno and Caruso. Joined by Warren Baggies, trying desperately to get away from Contador, Valverde, Chris Froome, and recoup some of that time he has lost. Six minutes so far in this welter. Age is on his side. 23 years of age uh, next month. Warren Baguil, he's a French star of the future. They're holding him off from the Tour de France, but he'll be there soon. French, of course, came through the Tour this year. They've not had real any, any real GC contenders for years, but they now seem to have two or three. But this one just might prove to be the best of them in the long term. I think you're right, Graham, And he's got the right attitude as well. Well, Navarro is in trouble there. And Sanchez as well. Samuel Sanchez is looking uh, as though he's struggling to stay in the wheel. Chris Froome still on the back of that group. Still Van der Waller doesn't get any closer, but he's holding these two in his gun sights. We climb all the way to the line today. We get up amongst the lakes. There are two big lakes here in the Lagos de Covadonga. This is Sikar and also Sanchez. Two team leaders beginning to feel the pain of the day as these three riders try to ride away from the bunch at the moment. They are no danger to the leaders of this tour. And that's why possibly they're holding back on reaction. Yeah, well, it makes you look. You see Caruso as well. Keeps looking back there. So they've obviously got something planned soon. And uh, we may well see Rodriguez attack fairly soon. We are now at 800 metres here. Where well, this stretcher averages 13% with 70% kick-ins. This is a tough sector of the climb just now for a couple of kilometres. Sanchez knows it well. He's on the back wheel of Chris Froome, who's still on the back wheel of his teammate, Mikel Nieve. This is Zoga still making the pace there. Contador's a bit of a gap went, but Contador's quickly moved up. Valverde's back up there as well. Oh. Aru. I'll tell you, Graeme, you could feel that road as they took that left-hand bend, and it just got so steep. Adam India coming back here. He was in the original breakaway, picked up. This group's getting very small now. Dan Martin's still there in that group. And let me remind you, Dan Martin had to change bikes on the previous hill. It took him a long, long chase uh, down the mountain in very treacherous conditions, but he got back before this climb started, and he's in the right part of the split. Moved up into 10th overall yesterday, the Garmin rider. He's the rider on the far right in the blue jersey with the white stripes. Well, climb they do, but they're not pulling away, and Contador has decided now. Well. He's sitting on Rodriguez here, but he's waiting for his moment to join those three. I just got that, and I think Valverde knows it, 
and Dan Martin is trying to master Valverde as well. That's quite an acceleration by Rodriguez, actually, and here he comes. Yeah, well, he did see that. It's two, two teammates have opened a bit of a gap, and I think what they've done now as well, they'll have assessed each other. They know where they're at now. They're in a very, very strong position here, Katusha. Three riders from Katusha here and uh, that would put them in fine stead to take over the lead in the team race. And Froome's gone from this group at the moment. I mean, there's no panic. We know Chris Froome, uh, no panic for the moment, but he has lost contact with this group. Well, we saw it yesterday, and then we all know what happened yesterday. Froome recovered and passed them all and actually gained time on the main riders. But he's got a bit of work to do here, but once again, the Eves tried to pace him back up. Now the acceleration's gone, they've settled in again. Froome continues to ride back to them, but here comes the next acceleration. And Warren Barguia on the 15% stretch goes, and this time Contador's decided to see what's in it for him. Barguil's looking very good. Dan Martin there can see him grimacing. He's just losing contact with this group as well. Well, Warren Bargui is very, very impressive here. Contador face never really gives anything away, neither does the face of Valverde there in white. He just keeps looking at the front wheel of Contador, almost taking his pace off that front wheel. Uh, Contador's not uh, looking too bad, though. He's making, just looking around, just making sure who's there. He's not going to take it up because, remember, he is in that red jersey. It's up to the others to take it away from him. Yeah. Aru is the rider in the uh, Astana turquoise colours, and uh, as Bagu Bagui tries to go again, you also here is Rigoberto Uran in that black jersey. Just a little bit of a lull in that group, and you can see Dan Martin's come back to that group as bagil has gone. The pace just went out. They're all looking at each other at the moment. Well, they, they actually, I think they wanted, they wanted to control Rodriguez. Now they've got Rodriguez for the moment. Uh, Bagui has gone, he's got the gap but I don't think he can put it home and look at Dan Martin and accelerate he looked as though he was in trouble, now he's lifting the pace. Yeah well that's one of those things sometimes isn't it, you don't like it, you've gone out the back but you're keeping your own rhythm going and when you come back to a group you don't want to then suddenly slow down to that group and you want to keep your own pace going Well this is Caruso uh, Katusha are launching everything today as uh, now Contador joins Caruso, Valverde, Rigoberto Uran is just behind, Martin has been relegated back to the tail of this, and remember all of these attacks and counter-attacks are stretching the gap over Chris Froome, he's still in the distance there, but he's lost a few seconds. Yeah, I think that with the acceleration and this climb, it may well prove too much for this, for Chris Froome today, and it's Contador really seeing the danger now, and he's put his foot down, look at this. Well... Alberto Contador, after his crash in the Tour de France, has come back to this. Every day, the riders expect him to, re to, re uh, to slow down, to find he hasn't got the base fitness, and every day he proves them wrong. Chris Froome sticks to his guns, now he's on his own, now Nieve has gone... He's actually looking like he's coming back again now, he's, actually, he's looking stronger and stronger as we get further up this climb. He's still over five kilometres to go, and Froome could be mirroring what he did yesterday. Finally come back and get straight to the front and take off. Well, this we could do without these, riot, these people running through this group while there's riders just behind them. Well, let's not forget, there are still two leaders on the road. Cameron Meyer is still up there, along with Niamitz. 78 seconds is the gap as the leaders again take a rest. Contador prepared to drive now, the leader of the tour, not looking for any help from Valverde, who is second overall. Chris Froome just behind the, the cars down there, but this is the leader now as he continues inside five kilometres to go. Chemeswaf near Mitz. Now, again, Valverde. They've up. Yeah, they've eased up again. It's just about, uh, it's about easing up, attacking. Who's going to break? Aru's come back to them as well, Fabio Aru. Just have a look around that bend for the black jersey of Chris Froome. He's being timed at 15 seconds behind this group at the moment. Contador always looking over his shoulder to see exactly the location of Chris Froome. And he's There's not that far behind. With him now. <laughs> and he's not that far behind. Rigoberto around. Dan Martin doing a fantastic ride to still be here. 
Contador, Valverde, Rodriguez, and the rider in the turquoise is Aru, who's still looking for a podium finish at the end of this race. Now, if they keep faulting like this, bet your bottom dollar, we're going to see a man in black appear in that picture because Chris Froome holds it, and there he is, pacing a backup, among others, uh, Dan Martin as well, Rigoberta Uran, Warren Bargui, and he's come back again. Yeah, looks like Moreno's coming back to this group as well. Well, they're throwing everything they can at Chris Froome, but he just lets them get on with it, and then he comes smoothly back to their sides. It's actually Caruso is still there, I believe. Caruso at the back. Meanwhile, he's pushing on well, isn't he, up front? He's managing to hold that gap. It was tumbling down, but uh, the acceleration has well, now gone on his own. He's keeping that gap at around the minute mark. And meanwhile, these guys are all sitting here looking at each other. Who's going to attack next? Well, he hasn't won a race uh, near mitts in 2010. Uh, and uh, a year later, he joined the Lamprey team. He's never won a race for his team. This year he's riding very well, though, near Mitch. He's had third in the Tour of Trentino in Italy, and he was fifth in uh, the Tour of Poland, which was in August. So he's got good form. Baggy tries once more. Now they're looking at each other. Slowly but surely, they're lifting the pace again, and if they've looked over the shoulder, they're going to find they've got Chris Froome with them. Contador and Valverde won't be too worried about Baggy at the moment. No. The race is between... Uh, Contador, Valverde, Rodriguez and Froome, that's the big race. Well, what a terrific battle this is, and I would uh, suggest one of the best we've seen on the Lagos de Covadonga. Another Chris acceleration Froome. is Chris, Chris Froome's losing it. He just, just, yeah, just he, losing it again. Yeah, he just holds his rhythm. He admits he time trials his own private world on these climbs. They all rush away. He holds the, the level that he can cope with. And then, if they slow down, he's back. Yeah, you could just see Valverde there with the, the four kilometre. He just had a quick look round on that bend, and he's decided this time, I think he's going to keep the pace going. Well, how many times in these last two weeks have we seen this race come down to a battle of the final climb of the day? But this one could open big time gaps. Froome, again, is pedalling up to the tail of the group. Contador's just opening the gap, but it's the same people following Valverde and Rodriguez all the time. It's the same three. The face of Alberto, Val, uh, Alberto Contador here. Valverde doesn't give anything away. He just concentrates. I think he shuts his eyes sometimes and hopes when he opens them, he's still on the back wheel of Contador. And they've just picked up uh, Van der Waal there as well. That's on the... And the Warren Bargui has also been washed away again from the action having started it 2.9 kilometers to the summit and the gap is inside one minute but it's about now when we rather hope that Niemic can get the victory it would be his first uh, since 2010 and he's certainly ridden for it today but whether he can hold off even 52 seconds in what's left of this race it's very much up for debate back to a 20 second deficit for Chris Froome he's been there before yeah, the group just gone over. There's a little bit of a descent here now. It doesn't descend for too long, maybe half a kilometre before they kicks up again till, till, till just one and a half kilometres to go, and then we have another drop down. So riders here will be taking a breather and uh, we'll just this. Oh, Rodriguez. Out. Yeah, soon this is gone. taking a breather, Graham. There goes Rodriguez. Three Spanish riders uh, trying to dictate this race now. Big move by Rodriguez, but they're not going to let him get very much of a gap at all. Contador trying to go, and Valverde again content to follow. Makes you wonder if they come up to the line just how much uh, Valverde's got left, and I would think quite a bit. Yeah, this finish will actually suit him down to the ground, Valverde. If these do come into that final kilometre together, Valverde has got to be the favourite for the, for the stage. Cam Meyer going through picture there. He's been wiped out from the leaderboard. There's only one man left up front of the original breakaway of five that once had 11 minutes on this field. Now it's down to 38 seconds, and I think uh, we're going to see a similar finish to what we saw yesterday when Ryder Hegedal got by Olivier Zaga and caught him 150 metres from the finish. 
He's not going to give up, though. He still lives in hope, but it's still a long way to go. They've slowed down. There's a chance yep. again. Yep, they've slowed down again. They're all looking at each other. Uh, they can't separate them on the road. It's um, more like a track race now. And it's all going back. You see the gap's going up again. And if he can get over in that last kilometre, still with 20 seconds or so, he will, he will hold on for the stage win. Well, two riders together, an Irishman and... Uh, well, we'll call him an Englishman, but many will call him a South African or an African rider, born in Nairobi, educated in Johannesburg. But Chris Froome is now making his way back to that group again. If they don't kick too soon, he'll rejoin. Still looking at his word about Contador. Meanwhile, the gap's gone up, 40 seconds. Contador's accelerating again. Slowly builds it up. And Rodriguez wants to win this, and he'll nurture hopes. He has a very explosive finish on climbs like this. Still 35 seconds behind the man of the day, though, Niemic. And look at this now. Chris Froome has kept up the cadence here, and he might be shedding Dan Martin. Neil Martin, rather. Oh, Dan Martin. We'll get it right one day. They've slowed again. Martin might even get back up to Froome there. Valverde is just finding his time. He's made no moves whatsoever yet, Valverde. Is Aru going to come back? He's also in the slipstream. Here he comes. Well, he's catching up with Aru, and that's not too far away from the trio here. Contador, a little bit compromised here. He cannot get rid of the white jersey of Valverde, yet he's doing all of the work. Constantly looking over his shoulder to see what he's doing and seeing if he can catch them off, the, off guard. But uh, at the moment, he's not being able to drop Valverde or Rodriguez. Well, the flag of the Astoria has the blue flag there with the yellow cross on it. We'll cheer anybody who's Spanish, of course. This is the man going up from Poland who's trying to win the day. 1.7 kilometres to go. 32 seconds is the gap. It's going to be close, but, you know, he might do it. Yeah, he's just got to get over. He's got about 500 metres to bascule over this the, this next bit before he's got a nice run down just to the last few hundred metres. Froome has come up behind Aru. Aru wants to be up with those three as much as Chris Froome does. He'll help him if he can. As these two riders, what an amazing piece of cycling by Chris Froome. He has suffered beyond even his victories in the Tour de France in this race because he's fighting to find his form again after his crash in this year's Tour. But, boy, he will not give up. Uh, the gap's gone up again. Just acceleration by Contador. The gap has opened up a little bit. So, at the moment, it may well be that Niemiec can hang on for that uh, stage win and take the 10 seconds bonus, but uh, there's still six seconds and four seconds for second and third here. Well, the way these guys... OK, we're talking minutes with everybody except, of course, the uh, separation of the first two riders, but these seconds might well count by the end of this race. Now, Froome again. The road will tilt a little bit in his favour. He'll see a search to switch those gears as we start our journey past the lakes here. Heading up towards the finish. This man knows now it is not far, but I'm afraid it's not easy either. One kilometre to go. Niemic is ahead of these three. And he looks set now to celebrate his victory at 34 years of age. Last time he won a race was in the mountains. It was stage two of the Tour of the Pyrenees in August 2010. Now he can have a win here in the Astorias. But there is the approach to the last 500 metres. How cruel is that? Yeah, he's got it, um, but he'll, the momentum on that descent will keep him down. It really only kicks up in, this, uh, in the last 200 metres. Sharp right-hand bend up to the finish line, but he's got the stage win. And the second win for his team as well. Anacona got the first, and now this man is going to get the second. But this will be very, very special for the Polish rider. Przemysław Fenijemitz comes up towards the line for his first win since August 2010. Remember, he was best placed in that breakaway. He conceded 16 minutes and 18 seconds. He'll get a little bit back, but he wasn't looking for that, and he's got to keep going all the way to the line because just behind this flotilla of motorbikes as he wins is the race for second place here. And this is going to be Valverde. You're right, Graham. It suited him. 
and they've got time gains here. He's both of those riders take a small bonus as a, a Contador comes in in fourth, no bonus and a time loss. Aru and Froome grit their teeth and cross the line. About 18 seconds down on the winner. Yeah, well, we can see that there's very few seconds between all the favourites there again, but I think the significant one was Valverde, second, took six second bonus and some time out of Contador as well. Well, here we see a fantastic win for N Niemic and uh, probably benefited a little bit um, from the fact that the Contador, Valverde, Rodriguez group were going in fits and starts, attacks and then slowing up and uh, allowed this uh, rider to stay away. But there's no taking away what has been a, a brilliant victory and a second victory for Alapre in this year's Vuelta. Five seconds he held on by Nien Niemietz, but the important time gaps were behind him. Valverde and Rodriguez finished together, picking up bonuses of six and four seconds respectively. Contador was five seconds behind them, and seven ahead of Chris Froome, exactly the amount he lost to Froome on stage 14. Arrow was with Froome, Dan Martin was on his own 28 seconds back, with Warren Barguil at 44. Rigoberto Aran came in a minute down, just ahead of Robert Hezink and Danny Moreno. So the order of the pointy hat to Shemis Wachniemietz after another breakaway stage win. And yet another crash for Dan Martin, who's starting to thrive on them. Everything was going to plan, everything was perfect, and then suddenly I'm, uh, some guy, somebody clipped my front wheel, and I went over the barrier, and down maybe five, six metres into a, down a ravine, you know. It's, I don't, yeah, it was kind of scary, because I didn't really know when I was going to stop falling, but then I had to climb back up with the help of the fans, and, then my and Nathan Hass was there to drag me back up. And, yeah, the whole team waited, and yeah, what an incredible job by like, the Garmin Sharp team. It was just like to get me back into the race, and then my legs were fantastic. I mean, I didn't felt so good, and it just yeah, just uh, unfortunate to waste so much energy, but at least I got back in the race, and yeah, big thank you to Ryder. Fantastic victory yesterday. And, then he saves my he saves my race today. Just like we took so many risks on the downhill, it was like it was like glass. It was so slippery. It's every corner just drifting. Now, if you think riding a mountain stage is hard, try holding this pose for 27 minutes. That's how long it took John Dagenkolb to turn up for the green jersey presentation, which, considering he was in the breakaway group right up until the final climb, was an achievement in itself. More than half the field was behind him. 90 riders came in half an hour down, including Luis Leon Sanchez in the polka dot jersey, by which time a new one had already been presented to Alejandro Valverde, the new leader by two points. No change in personnel for the centrepiece of the post-stage protocol, though. Contador lost time to both Valverde and Rodriguez today. The question was why they all didn't conspire to put more time into Chris Froome. Lo pasa que es casi imposible, ¿no? Un acuerdo entre tres mosqueteros como tú, Alejandro y Joaquín. Sí, pero bueno, mira, por otro lado, el, la última parte de, de Lagos eh, es más llevadera. Eh, se puede llegar a colaborar, puedes decir, oye, mira, vamos a ir hoy a, a eliminar un corredor y luego ya nos encargamos el resto de los días. Pero a ver, siempre es complicado, cada uno hace, hace su, su carrera y bueno, contento con el resultado. Yo es que tengo tortículos, entonces tenía eh, tendencia a darle para el otro lado. No, al final, ya te digo, eh, he escuchado que eso, que Alberto se ha quejado de que no había colaboración. Yo las veces que me he puesto a tirar o he puesto a mi equipo... Eh, me han remachado, con lo cual no sabía, digo, bueno, ¿qué hacemos? ¿Ponemos ritmo o nos seguimos atacando, no? Así que esta sí que es verdad que está siendo una vuelta rara, pero eh, por ahora pues Alberto le está yendo de maravilla, porque eso también es forma de correr. Just off the pace today. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I'm just trying to ride my own rhythm here and uh, do the best I can each day. Thank you, guys. Not sure whether that was Chris Froome or a recording from yesterday. And the standings have a slightly rewound look about them. Having gained seven seconds yesterday to pull within a minute 13 of Contador, Chris Froome lost seven today to move back to a minute 20, which is where he was two days ago. Valverde moves a bit closer back to Contador and a bit further ahead of Froome, who now only edges Joaquim Rodriguez for third place by fractions of a second. Fabio Aru is up to fifth, and Dan Martin has crashed the top seven. 